Welcome to the Awakened Goddess Show, your source for inspiration, wisdom, and personal discovery. The place to learn from a diverse mix of mentors, metaphysical experts, spiritual leaders, and best-selling authors from around the world. I'm Angela Wilkinson, intuitive coach and founder of the Awakened Goddess Academy. Join me as I explore the minds of my masterful guests while they share powerful insights and easy-to-use tools you can start using right away. Now, let's tap into the energy of the Awakened Goddess and be enlightened by today's guest. Welcome, Anita, to the Awakened Goddess Show. I am so, so, so excited to talk with you today um, because I kind of want to be you when I grow up. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You travel, you do all these amazing things. And so I thought, you know, you've really gone beyond limitations uh, that a lot of people kind of get hung up with. And so my show is all about that anything is possible. And I know your message is that you are here to do something so do what you came here to do and so i'm so excited to see where this conversation goes today so welcome (laughs) thank you so much for having me angela it's like an honor to be here because i was i remember like hearing about and then discovering your podcast when i was just getting started online and seeing other people that i looked up to on it and so when i saw your message i was like yes (laughs) Yeah. So the, the admiration is mutual. <laughs> Good. I love it. I love that we get to co-create and play and and just um, my goal with the show is always to kind of stay on the edge and expand consciousness and, and just really push our limits further than we think that we can go. So, and I think we're going to have an amazing conversation about just that. So um, let's start kind of at the beginning for people that have never come across your, you know, what you're doing, your message. Um, You travel and you are really big on bringing um, awareness. Um, You help um, bring awareness to organizations and social causes. And what was the catalyst for your journey down this path? Absolutely. So, to, to sort of explain what I do now is obviously constantly evolving and we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll talk more about it. But um, it started, you know, what I do now is, is really different from my, the, my contemporaries, my age and older and younger and, and most of the people that I grew up with and that I knew. Um, and sometimes I wonder, you know, it's like, oh, wow, because the life I have now, to be honest, I'm really grateful, not just for like the external, the travel and the incredible people that I get to work with, but just like the peace and the joy mm-hmm. that I have in my heart. Like that's the biggest reward. Um, and, you know, when I look back, I'm like, how did I get here? It honestly started off with the same place that a, pretty much everyone who's listening started off with. Like I went to high school. And then I went to university and along that journey, I had a lot of, you know, there were, we always get forks in the road, right? But I had a lot of forks in the road where I got to make those decisions about whether, am I going to do what my heart wants to do or am I going to go in and get a normal internship and a normal job and do what everyone else seems to be doing because that seems to be how you live life in, you know, on planet earth, you know, as someone from the first world. Um... But it, uh, you know, if I were to pick one big decision point, it was when I, after I had graduated from my freshman year of university. Um, at the time, I was studying media, and I got um, a really good internship for someone my age. I was the youngest out of nine interns at this marketing agency. It paid full time. It paid well. Well, it was like the best kind of internship you could get for someone in my program, um, and so. As a part of that internship, though, I was a promotional representative for different brands. So I, you know, I also got to see what people who worked in offices went through. (laughs) And so I found myself in like in the middle of the summer, it's gorgeous and sunny outside. And I'm, I'm working alongside these 30, 40, 50 year olds who just really do not seem like they're enjoying life. Um, And just, you know, I, you know, something was like, is is that it? Like you get a full-time job and you just work here and no one seems really happy. Like there's got to be more to life than this. 
And then the cherry on top of that experience was as a part of that internship, I had a two-week stint where I was in a hardware store representing a brand that had just come out with a vacuum cleaner. And my job was to stand there with this little piece of carpet, (laughs) my sign, and my job was to throw dirt on the carpet and then vacuum it back up. Right. Throw dirt and vacuum it back up. And I did that for eight hours a day. Um, and while I'm a big proponent of making the most of what you have, giving away your get, and you know, and making the most of every every experience, like there are no bad experiences, they're all learning experiences. Uh, that really challenged me. And I was like, really, Anita, if this is the life, if this is the best that life is is giving you right now, like following that track of like university and then job, and then I guess a better job. If right now you know, I've got the best of the best and it's led me to a hardware store vacuuming up dirt. <laughs> Let's try something different. Like yes. there's got to be something more. And so Something's the following, missing there. <laughs> yeah. Like, there, there's something messed up with the system right now. So that I like, that was when I, the following summer, I was like, I got to do something different. And there were, you know, throughout the years, there were a lot of points where it was like, you know, are you going to do what your heart wants to do? Or are you going to do the thing, you know, the, and the thing that's a little bit scary, a little bit more exciting, or are you just going to do what's safe? Right. And so I, at that time, I had the safety of knowing that I was going to go back to university to finish my degree. So I thought, why don't I go travel? So I ended up going to Italy to teach English. And that was the first time, though, that I met other 20-somethings, just like other people in the world who did not give a crap about trying to get a corporate job. Yeah. Like there were, you know, I met Australians and Americans and other Europeans um, who had spent years who, and some of them still are traveling the world teaching English. And they just, they just didn't care about what people thought and they didn't care. They're like, no, I actually would rather, you know, I, some of them had teaching degrees and they could get normal teaching jobs, but they chose to do this kind of more freestyle teaching around the world thing because it brought them more joy. Mm-hmm. So that began to began to plant the seed of like there's another way of doing life, and so when I came back, you know, I went I went back to school, and the following summer I had that same option again. I was in business school at this point. And I thought I could go do what my classmates are doing and get like a good business job, um, you know, and get paid better. But I thought back to that summer of like I don't want to end up in an air conditioned office again. Like it just isn't me. And so I ended up going to Africa um, and working with social entrepreneurs there. And then I went back to Africa again. Um, and I just, I networked, I hustled, I talked to people. I, I, I discovered this journey, this, this process of talking about the things that you want mm-hmm. makes people recognize you for the things that you want to do in life. And then when they're looking for people, they come to you. And so I was, la- I just landed like internship and job and like, you know, contract job after contract job. Um, and I, by the time I graduated university, I'd been to 21 countries, like traveled all over the world. I didn't have rich parents bankrolling me. It was just like me putting myself out there. And then somehow miraculously, before I knew what manifesting was, technically I was like manifesting all these ways to get paid to travel. Right. Um, and then when I graduated university, I had, you know, a bigger fork in the road where I could really like, there was no more fallback of going back to school. It was like, really, I could go and get a full-time job with the degrees that I've gotten, um, the, which would be the safer route. But at, by then I had really seen a lot more of, you know, being an entrepreneur, I dabbled in it a little bit. I had, you see more of like the online marketing world and this idea of like people make a living through blogging, mm-hmm. you know, and traveling. And so I started to take those chances. Um, and I started my, that was when I started like my current website, anitawingley.com and blogging and putting myself out there. Um, And then like literally bit by bit, you just, you start getting confidence and you start putting yourself out there more. And, um, and then I found different ways. Um, You know, at first I did life coaching. I I have still have some like online products and online programs. Um, But most recently, the biggest thing I've done is like the couch surfing and and crowdfunding as a way of funding the work that I want to do in the world. Mm -hmm. And traveling allows me to continue to keep my expenses low. And here we are. Here we are. And you are in the UK right now. Last yeah. week you were in Ireland. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, okay, I want to back up just for a second because you talk about all these decision points where you could have taken the tr- more traditional safe route or you could have followed more of your passions and your dreams. Now, for people that are listening or watching, um, let's talk about 
really the behind the scenes of what's going on inside of you during this process because I I understand it completely. It's like going full time with a show with um, it not really generating a income was like this big leap of faith. Taking the show on the road is like me continuing stepping into that unknown. And so I want to get like pull back the curtain and just talk about, you know what I'm talking about, this, this yeah. fear stuff. So let's help people learn how to step into the unknown and do so with a little bit more support than they may feel right now. Yeah, I think the best way I can answer this is to speak from my own experience because, and I'll speak about more more recently, especially like taking that taking that leap of deciding not to get a full time job and to just dive into the online world and see what would happen. Um, because at first, it really just felt like I was crashing and burning. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, about you know a year and a half ago, I this is last last winter, twenty fifteen. I discovered that I was having like anxiety attacks and panic attacks and I had never had that in my life and at that time I'd spent about a year building up my online business and platform and blog and you know all that stuff that they tell you to do when when you learn about you know building an online business um you know and having that sort of like virtual life right like work from anywhere life make money online now is this um, is this when you were on periscope talking about teaching people how to get paid to travel this was before Periscope. Oh, before we'll Periscope. Get Periscope. Okay, Periscope we'll get to Periscope. Periscope is a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, no. This is actually this is before I got on Periscope, um, and so I call it my carpet bottom moment because you know a lot of people make the the whole like yeah I'm pursuing my dream. They make it seem really gra- glamorous, but there right. is a lot of fear. Yeah. Um, but. What I've been able to do over the last couple months is like build up the foundation where like I have no fear. And this is what we can like dissect. And so mm-hmm, feel free to mm-hmm, yeah. ask me questions about it. But um, about a year and a half ago last winter, I, I, was having, I had what I call my rock carpet moment where I was literally lying like with my stomach on the carpet. I remember I was with this laptop and I was like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my like, forehead on my forearms just being like, I can't do this anymore. Like I was waking up or sleep dreaming of like my spreadsheets and my blogging editorial calendar and like, um, and all this stuff that I had been told to do to grow an yeah. online business. Um, but it was just, instead of being happy and fulfilled, I felt so broken inside mm-hmm. and I couldn't understand mm-hmm. why. And so here's a couple elements of how I made these, how I made the decision to get to this point And then I have, I got past, you know, that like terror barrier, they call it everything that you desire is on the other side of fear. Right. And so I really felt like I was like hitting the wall of like my biggest fear of like, this is not working. (laughs) But, but before I even got there, you know, there was that, I think I, I I guess I was partly just born with the soul that was like, you've literally either got to, um, do what lights you up or (laughs) this sounds a bit morbid, but morbid, but some people will resonate with this or like, I probably would have killed myself. Yeah. Like I feel like if I had actually gone into a job and like gone that route, um, well, first of all, like my soul just did not allow me to, but I feel yeah. like if I had actually gone down that route, it just, it wasn't in me to do it. And I so totally I, I understand. Never, I totally yeah. understand. <laughs> um, so in a sense, I kind of felt like I had no option. It was literally like this way, like I could not physically bring myself to submit like more than five resumes <laughs> to job postings when I graduated university. So that's one aspect. But as you mentioned in the beginning, the, the, the line that says on my website is do what you came to do. And I'm a big believer um, that like each of us came into this, this earth with unique gifts and talents for a reason. Mm-hmm. And just like an oak seed is programmed within that, like, you know, that little acorn with the DNA to grow into this massive oak tree, we as human beings are programmed in our souls with the DNA to grow into like the brightest lights that we were capable of. And to me, being a bright light means that you are, you are living out your calling. You are making mm-hmm. the biggest impact that you can make with your life. And it's as much as a feeling as it is as a physical manifestation. Like Oprah is someone who is a really bright light in the world. Right. And we can, and I just don't mean light in like the you know, like figurative way. I mean like literally she is touching millions 
of lives with her work. Mm -hmm. And it all stemmed from like Oprah at some point being like, no, I'm going to do something meaningful with my life, right? I'm going to follow those signs. So for me, I just, you know, I've, I've always felt like, yeah, there's something I'm meant to do in this world and there's something that lights me up. And when I first traveled, like it was like I got glimmers of that. And we all get those times where we get glimmers of like, oh my God, I love this. Yeah. I wish I could get paid to do it. <laughs> the thing is like, we've got to listen to that voice and we've got to listen to that. And so, and so there was also like that inner belief in me that was like, you, like, you can't go the other route. You don't have another option. Um, so, so I would, but I also followed the signs. Like to give you a concrete example, when I graduated, I had like two thousand dollars in my savings, and I discovered um, one of the online entrepreneurs who has like one of these programs that teaches you how to build an online business. Mm-hmm. And at the time, it just like something me was just like, "You've got to do this. It's going to change the trajectory of your life." And so I invested my own money, like two thousand dollars, and I still had to student debt. So it wasn't like you know I didn't tell my parents. I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I put my own money in it, but it was like, it, it took, it was one of those, that's an example of like a leap of faith. Mm-hmm. And like literally two weeks after I paid for that program, I got a check from a university for like extra financial aid for $2,000. Yes. Um, and it's like, that's an example of how like we are given these opportunities to show up and to listen. Like, you know, I could have easily not gone to Italy to teach English and gotten a more higher paying job, but it was like, no, this is what excites me. So I followed that. Mm -hmm. And then it's, you know, I once heard someone say it's courage over confidence. Like now I'm someone who's pretty confident. Like when I, when there's something I want to do, I'm like, and it feels right. I do it. Yeah. You know, and there's like a teeny voice of fear, but it's like, I live 95% of my life from that place of inspiration, passion, and belief. Mm -hmm. And like that 5% of fear, I just accept as being part of human being human. But in the early days, it was a lot more courage than confidence. And it was that courage to like go to Italy to teach English. And then it was that courage to like invest in that program for myself, you know, and then it it was, you know, the courage to get back up again when it didn't feel like it was going right. Um, So that's another, you know, behind the scenes, one of like my personal mottos in life um, is, is be more brave. And I have these postcards that I mail out to people from time to time. And And this idea of like everything that I do now, like I know personally started with a seed of courage. Mm -hmm. And it was like, and you cannot judge your level of courage with someone else's. Like for some people, traveling on an airplane freaks them out. For me? Yeah. Yeah. It's like no brainer, (laughs) right? But if it's something that scares you, like literally do one thing a day that scares you. The reason that I went to Africa when I was 21 was because around that time, Lululemon was just getting big. And they had these plastic bags and they said, do one thing a day that scares you. So I thought, well, why don't I do one thing a day that, one thing a day that scares me um, for four months and I'll go to Africa for four months. And that's what I did. Mm -hmm. But it was like that conscious decision to step into the fear because it scared me instead of shying away from it. Okay. So, so so I want you to clarify because there's fear of, there's fear that comes along with stepping into the shoulds and you know, kind of like what you were talking about earlier, how you're supposed to create your business or create this or follow your dreams versus the fear that comes from a deeper call. Mm, That is so good. Okay. So I'm going to paraphrase this, but I I think it's someone else said this, but fear is excitement without the breath. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I do agree, though, with you, though, that there are two kinds of fear. There's, like, real fear of, um, you know, like, oh, my God, how am I going to pay my bills? And then there's... And then there's the like exciting fear that you step into, right? Like that call to adventure. There's always a little bit of fear to it. And I think in the early days, before I was even aware of what I was doing, and I just kind of, you know, I kind of (laughs) fell into it. Yeah. But... um, I really, I really think that the voice of your excitement fear, that like your calling fear, that voice is a lot bigger. And it's, it can be a lot bigger than that little, than the other, than the voice of fear that says like, this is a really bad idea. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, it comes back to believing 
that you're here to do something bigger. And when you allow yourself to simmer in that and simmer in the knowing that I'm here to do something so much bigger, what is that? What is that? What is that? You will get an answer and it will come with like a packet of fear attached to it, like our good buddy fear. <laughs> yeah. But like when you seek that answer, like more and more, it's like that vision becomes clear. And then, because I feel like the other fear, that other fear is like the little fear of like, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to do that? Like, what will other people think? But in, it's, it's, it's about the question that you ask, right? It's like, I felt, I think I've spent a lot of time in my life asking like, what's my calling? Like, what am mm -hmm. I here to do? And when I ask that, it also brings up fear, but it transcends, you know, if we're going to talk about our chakras, <laughs> um, it transcends the like lower chakra fears, right. like your, your, your root chakra. Those are like the, the, the desire for security and stability, right? All of us have those as humans, but I think that our, our souls have a much bigger calling and a vision to want to do something big. Um, from a practical standpoint, I will say that now through my meditation practice, because meditation is a, is a big part of my life, um, I'm able to differentiate those two voices. Mm -hmm. And very clearly, it's like literally I can hear the voice in my head. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's that little voice of fear. And then I, you know, and then I can just let it pass. Um, but before you even have that, before I even had that, that anchor of, of, of recognizing the two kinds of fears, really just like asking that bigger question with my life over and over again and being like, you know, like there's got to be more to this life than working in an office. Like, what am I here to do? Um, and then another practical tip for people, again, it's just something I do now, which back in the early days I didn't do, but I think now if, now that I have this, you know, this if you would have known back then, yeah, <laughs> is, is journaling. Yeah. Journaling helps so much because like I said, not everyone can like listen to their thoughts and be, and, and not let their thoughts drive them crazy. Cause that actually takes practice with meditation. Um, but everyone can journal and everyone can write out their thoughts. And so one of the things I love to do whenever I'm feeling cluttered is write out the voice of my fear and just be like, mm -hmm. okay, fear, you know, or, or like, okay, Anita, what do you want to tell me? And like actually write out that voice. And I've done it times before. And like that voice is usually pretty frightening. It's like, yeah. this is a really bad idea. Like, what if you lose your house? Like, what if all this happens? Um, you know, what will people think? But just allow yourself to write it out. Yeah. Get all of that out and then also access your inner wisdom. So one of my favorite prompts um, that I write is like, dear guides of the highest truth and compassion, I welcome you to speak through me now. And then I just let my pen flow and let it say whatever. Or if I want to, if I'm really honing in on a situation, I'll be like, okay, you know, what do you want to tell me about this situation? Again, mm -hmm. but also accessing like dear inner wisdom, you know, or like dear highest self, like what should I do here? Right. And then writing out those two voices is really powerful because once you're done, you can actually see the two voices in front of you and you actually get to choose which one you're going to listen to. And the journaling is itself is a meditation, but I think that's one of the most tangible ways that you can really not live your life based on fear because you recognize like everyone has this. It's really like two voices right. in your head um, and you can choose which one you want to listen to. Yeah. And I kind of going back to the idea of the chakras um, and the, where the fear resides. Um, as you were talking, I realized that the, um, the fear that is not coming from an inspired place, it definitely feels heavier. So that would be in like the lower chakras. And then the, um, the fear that comes from stepping into maybe something outside of my comfort zone that is calling me in the right direction feels more light. It's kind of like an upper part of my body. So it's like almost a, a pulling forward. Yeah. Yeah. It's really a feeling. And as you said that, because I'm, I'm smiling, I realize it's like there's a fear that makes you smile. And then there's a fear that makes you like, <laughs> not <laughs> I don't know, like, you know, like sit and like want to sit in fetal position. Right. But there really is a fear that makes you want to smile. And that's the fear that we, that we're like, okay, let's do this. Even those years. Like that's the, that's the good fear. And everyone has both, but it's like the more that you learn to like follow the fear that makes you want to smile, like the more epic life gets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the fear that makes me smile is, is stepping into traveling more, taking the show, um, to different places around the world and, um, 
creating the the financial flow that allows me to do that. So I would love to use your expertise to talk through this. <laughs> yeah, I love this. Okay. And as you were talking, so I'm going to I would okay, I'm going to give you like all of my tips. Ask me anything you want. But I will say that what I'm doing is like very unconventional and not it's not for everyone. Not everyone wants to do it because I've done a lot of couch surfing. But I've always told people that if they want to travel, you've got to travel because it's really your soul speaking to you and it's telling you that there's more out there for you. There's more it wants to show you. But the only way we know how to articulate it in this life is travel. Because really, when you go to India, you go to Italy and you're like, wait, everyone stops for a siesta from three to six and that's normal? And you begin to question and you begin to realize we do get to design our entire lifestyles, mm -hmm. right? But your soul can only show you that by being like, go travel. So um, I, I'll tell you how, like my most recent trip, because um, I, I, left, I left Canada in December like for good. And it was a leap of faith for me because I had actually, the truth is, I've been in Canada. Once I decided to build an online business and platform, I'd been in Canada mostly for a year, for a year and a half um, because I was waiting to make enough money through my various income right. streams right. to travel. And, and that's, I, that's like the big lie, yeah. right? Yeah. That you it have really to wait for something lie. else. And yeah. it was kind of like I had, to, I had to do that for a year and a bit. To finally realize that, like, wait, Anita, you're doing that thing where you you're waiting for something else to work out to make it happen. Right. And that, until I was finally just like, I'm going to travel. Um, so what I've actually been doing right now is couch surfing. So I've built up, um, I like I built up an online audience through Periscope. Mm -hmm. um, and the like the real story. There's two sides behind like why I actually started traveling. One was. Obviously, okay, so one was like the good, like I really wanted to do good. I built up an audience over, um, at the time it was like, I think I'd been on Periscope for like six months and I had a, like a Periscope community of like 7,000, but like I'd really been authentic about sharing my story. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and so I, I knew that people would have my back and I also wanted to do something really tangible with my platform, right? I knew that rather than just setting my bedroom speaking inspiration, what if I went and I did something tangible with my hands and feet to serve and to help people and to mm -hmm. show people things that would inspire them. So I was actually like looking for a way that I could serve in the world, um, whether it was volunteering or whatever, but a way that I could use my platform therefore be physically with my phone um, as, a, as, a, as a medium for good. The other, the flip side of that though, so as much as there was like a, a desire to do good and a desire to also to get out, um, I was also coming to heads with my parents who didn't fully agree with, um, like in my heart I know it's the same, it's the same love, but yeah. like the way it was articulated in this life they didn't agree with um, the way I was speaking my truth out into the world. And so they were kind of like, yeah, you leave there, got to stop this or essentially leave. Mm. And I was like, well, I'm not going to stop it because I knew it was like my truth in my heart. So right. it was like, I was like, okay, I guess I'm getting like catapulted out of my house. And so um, the way that mine came together was I literally was talking about this on Periscope and people were like, Anita, if you need somewhere to stay, you can come and stay at my place in New York or in Atlanta, Georgia, you know, or in San Francisco. And the thing is, when people say that, they don't actually expect you to show up. <laughs> right. uh, they don't expect you to take them up on that offer, but I did. Now, mind you, like some of these people were like total strangers, were more strangers, but they'd been on my Periscopes long enough that I knew that they were real people. Mm -hmm. Some of them I had like worked with on Global Meditation Scope on previous projects, so I'd Skype them. I knew that they were real people. Um, but again, nobody expects you to actually take them up on the offer, right? But I did, partly because I needed to, because I needed to leave my parents' <laughs> place in Canada. And I, like, right. had nowhere to go. So this whole journey, I started almost four months ago. I left my, took a bus from Toronto to New York. And I started off this whole journey by doing a 15-day road trip across America um, from New York um, down the coast, Atlanta, Georgia. You know, I did an event in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And then I was, and then I was a speaker at Periscope Summit in San Francisco, at the end of February, at the end of January, um, but that road trip was a chance because that road trip 
which really became like I took a train, I took two, like three flights, I think. Um, I took a chance because really I could have flown to Periscope Summit mm-hmm. for four hundred dollars, or but I had a feeling, you know, and I thought, where, how could I help the most people? And this has been the guiding question that I think will help you as well. Um, how can I help? How can I help more people? by taking this show on the road. You know, mm-hmm. how can I help more people by periscoping? Either I could fly on my own, but I realized I could actually probably inspire more people by doing the road trip. Financially, I was taking a chance because maybe it would cost me more to do the road trip mm-hmm. than it would to just pay $400 and take a flight. But I took the chance. And I ended up doing five live events across America, which like people from my Periscope community helped me to organize. Um, and the proceeds, because I knew I was going to go to Greece to help refugees at mm-hmm. that point. So the proceeds of that were essentially going to like go to, this, to humanitarian work and refugees. Um, but I ended up raising $1,200 by doing these live events and couch surfing. Um, and people donated plane tickets to me. People drove me. People bought train bought plane tickets, three plane tickets for me wow. were donated. Um, and then I couch surfed all along the way. And so instead of having like a deficit of $400, I had a surplus of 1200 And like that trip blew my mind because like people gave me toothbrushes. Like the electricity that powered my laptop and my phone was from people's homes. Like people fed me. I literally would not be alive and I would not be halfway like across the continent if it wasn't for my online community. Mm -hmm. And um, I know there's someone who's going to be like, yeah, but I don't have an online community. But that's not the point. (laughs) The point (laughs) is that I actually put it out there and I asked and I took people up on their offers. Um, And so for you, for example, again, like you, this might not be exactly the way that you do it, but you've obviously got like a huge, like incredible people who've been on your podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, And and some of those, maybe not everyone, but some of those people would love to host you. Some of those people who believe in your mission too, um, you know. And even if you just like put it at the put a call out in a future podcast after you simmer on this, and you're like, mm, do <laughs> maybe we'll actually do this and put a call out there and say like, you know, we want to take a waking goddess on the road, and maybe your vision would be like hosting a waking goddess events around mm-hmm. all across America or across mm-hmm. the world. But it's like taking those baby steps to put it into motion. Um, and so putting those baby steps to put into motion, seeing what comes back will probably surprise you and inspire you. And then taking people up on those offers. Um, and, and then the other thing, the other aspect of how I've been able to fund my travels, um, is, is this motto for life that I've found and we call it giving is living. And a lot of it is captured in, um, the website for, Mm -hmm this lifestyle, which is called Project Soul Fam, short for Soul Family. And the big question that's on the website is what would happen if we stopped worrying about money and careers and we woke up every day asking, how can I serve? Mm -hmm. And honestly, for you, Angela, actually, if you did this every day, I think your answer for how you can take Awaken Goddess on the road and travel more will come to you. Because I didn't plan to do the road trip. I actually started with that question of how can I serve more? How can I help more? And combine it with my own personal desire and passion, right? Like, I love to travel. I love to live stream. So I was like, how can I take that and use that to help more people? Mm -hmm. Um, And so that was what inspired the free meditation events across America. Because, um, like, I love, I do guided meditations on Periscope. I love it. I know it helps a lot of people. So I will, like, I thought of how can I do this in a way that it helps even more people? And there's something about the energy behind offering stuff for free first, Um, that inspired me, you know, from a business perspective, you know, I'm sure no business coach would tell me to do this. Um, but it, it just felt right to me because the energy behind that is totally different Mm -hmm. than trying to charge for something. And I actually found that when I offer stuff up for free and I allow people to help me put on free events, like it inspires them more than if I, I, I was like, come and pay 20 bucks to be inspired. Right. Right. And it's completely and since this show is called the Awakened Goddess show, it's something that it's really the real Awakened Goddess, you know, would would charge very differently than Mm -hmm. the online marketing gurus tell us to charge. That's right. That's right. And like you say, it's they don't that wouldn't be like the the way to get, you know, a big um, paycheck or whatever to give everything for free. But, yeah, you look at how like you say, how do you reach the most people? 
you know, so it's, it's looking at what is your value in underlying what it is that you're doing. So I like that you brought that up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really like, part of it is like my personal experience. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't really set out expecting that road trip to like change, like blow my mind as much as it did. But then also the more I dove into it, the more I'm just like, yes, this works. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. And so it's been asking, you know, if I had planned it out more, because really I just, I just started, I like packed, I did that road trip and then I was like, okay, where do we go from here? So really for the last four months, um, I, w- I would love to say, like, I had this amazing plan. I was going to travel to, f- like, in the last, since I left in December, I've been to four countries. I've literally been to Europe twice. So I went to Europe and I went back to North America and then I'm back in Europe. Um, but I, I didn't really have a plan. <laughs> I just started. Yeah. Um, but see, I think that's, I think that's really important to, um, for people to know is that, the more, you, okay, so it's like you set your intention, you know what your vision is. And I think as long as you're moving in that direction, the more you can let go of the outcome or how it's supposed to happen or your plan, I think the more you allow it to flow. And then things just line up um, as long as, because I used to be a person that plans everything, I'd map it out, I'd figure out exactly all the details, how it was going to happen, and then it wouldn't, right? like something would happen. And so the more I step into allowing things to, it's like I, I'm i more in a way reacting um, yeah. to what shows up. And then like you said before, checking in and, and seeing is this, does this feel right? Does this feel inspiring? Does it feel more expansive? Or does this feel like a, eh, maybe not? And then following that. Yeah, it yeah. really is that. Um, and then I, I can give you like, I think the inspiring part now, cause when I started, it was just this like road trip, you know, and even like, I've been, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to make money, you know? Right. But, but one, one of the things that allowed me to keep going on this, cause I wanted, I really wanted to push the envelope right. of, um, of what, what I stood for in this world and, you know, and how to really create change. And I think this will resonate with you as well. Because again, I'm like, your show, this show is called The Awakened <laughs> Goddess Show. Like, we really want to wake people up. Right. The the quote that I've really been like, it's just been like impressed on my heart because this was like the third time I mentioned it, even today, um, is, this, is Albert Einstein. And he said, we can't solve the problems of this world with the same level of thinking that created them. So and so true. this is why I have completely ditched all traditional like online marketing strategies unless they really resonate with me. Because the problem with what we've been taught, and even if you don't have an online business, um, you work in a job, it, it still applies because it's like we've been taught just to follow someone else's system mm-hmm. to make money or for success. Yeah. But the problem, the reason why none of that ever feels good is because, first of all, our souls don't want to just follow a blueprint. But we're not changing. We're not doing something really, really meaningful in the world if we're following the blueprint. Mm-hmm. Because in the grand web, we're just, we're doing the same thing. We're not changing the direction. Right. So for me personally, that's why I was like, I'm going to do the couch surfing because no other online entrepreneur doing it is really doing that. And it's not just for couch surfing sake. It's because I want to, because I know it's going to inspire people. And so personally, the other thing I realized was that, um, if I have somewhere to sleep like the night before and tomorrow night, um, if I have some water and I have some food for the day, <laughs> and most importantly, I have a solid Wi-Fi connection, yes, <laughs> I can do some pretty good damage in the world. Like I, like through Periscope and through just my own, like me experiencing myself, I realized that like if I've got those four things, um, I can help a lot of people. I don't need very much to help right. a lot of people. Um, obviously there's a little bit more (laughs) to it, like, you know, some healthy food and, you know, like heating stuff like there's, there's obviously other things, but when I really brought it down to that basic, that was what I think set me free because I realized that like what makes me most happy in the world is like creating content online and putting it out and inspiring people and helping people. Mm -hmm. And I don't need very much to live and survive. And I know that there are people who believe in me and my work enough to support me. Well, and I think, I think a big reason is because you're taking risks that other people wish that they could, 
and and they're living vicariously through you because it's like you're inspiring them you're you're speaking to that part of their soul that has this desire to step outside of the norm and they're not quite there yet yeah 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 and so the and again that goes back with the like what inspired me to do that though because as much as like I'm doing this adventure for myself. I know. <laughs> I, I'm also doing it for the world. Yeah. Right. It's that Albert Einstein. I'm and like this is the beauty. This is like the paradox of like taking those chances for the world and you inspire other people. You get to have the best life too. I know. Right. It's like I'm doing it for myself, but I'm also doing it for you, and I know it's inspiring you because, and and it's also for all of humanity. It's for all of humanity because it's only by not following someone's online marketing blueprint that I can really help the world. And personally, and again, this is like that calling bit, right? I'm not just here to make money for myself through an online business and travel the world. I'm here to like really awaken and help and uplift and serve humanity. And that requires that I be different. You're an awakened so, goddess. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so and and the the so the beauty then is I started doing this. I put it out there, you know. I started to show up. Um, I did the couch surfing and I and I, I served in the so I spent five weeks earlier this year helping um, in, on Lesbos, Greece, um, one of the hardest hit islands that gets a lot of refugees every day, and just serving and being there and helping and learning about and just learning, <laughs> learning a lot, right? Getting the curriculum of life embedded in me by being there. Yeah. Um, but the the beautiful thing that I that has happened to me. Cause when I first set out, it, it was really about how can I serve? How can I help and inspire? How can I use my Periscope channel for good? And then I went to serve in, in, in Greece with the refugees. And then I started to realize that like the universe, like is really teaching me through this journey, mm-hmm. right? It's like the journey will change you and it will teach you things that you, you can't even fathom. So I know for you, it's like, if you get that calling, you might be thinking part of it's an inner desire to travel and just to be free. Right. But part of it is because in the grand web, it's like the universe is trying to like pull you out of, of the life that you have now in the physical right. location because it wants to show you more. So for me personally, what's happened is, especially after working with refugees in Greece, like I started to see, I felt like, like literally my consciousness has been expanded. And whereas before it was like, I want to build a blog and a platform to help. Mm-hmm. You know, and have a freedom lifestyle and help other people. Now I'm like, no, my primary focus is helping people on a bigger scale, is creating like bigger movements and communities on Periscope to help other people. And so most recently I, I crowdfunded a book through Kickstarter. Um, and like that was almost like too easy. <laughs> like, it was too easy. Um, but and for those who yeah. aren't familiar with Kickstarter, it's different from other crowdfunding platforms in that you have to have it 100% fully funded in order to to get the money. Whereas mm-hmm. other like Indiegogo, GoFundMe, if you just get a portion, you can still access the money. Um, um, but like literally over the last four months, I, I crowdfunded about $5,000 for the refugee crisis. And we spent that with different organizations. Um, and then, you know, like my income streams have come through ways I expected and unexpected. Like mm-hmm. crowdfunding is one, but I've also been invited to events where sometimes I make like a small affiliate commission. Um, so, like sometimes just like people just send me money cause they want to, um, and then, and then my biggest, most concrete one though was the Kickstarter campaign and like putting that into motion and like seeing how it inspired other people. Mm-hmm. So this is the thing that I like, it was like a peak because I, I feel like you'll, you'll, you'll experience this yourself in the journey, Angela, but this is like a glimmer for you that like you actually help people when you ask them to give you money to support the projects that they love. Yeah. And it's only people who work in social good who access that like goodwill in people's heart. Like it's a really like special seed of humanity that I feel like a lot of people don't get to see because it, it only happens when you start asking them to help you. And you actually help yeah. people more when you ask them to help you instead of trying to stand on our, you know, guru pedestal and be like, I got this figured out. Yeah. Because I think part of the reason why people wanted to support me be because they saw themselves in being this person that was like, you know, had parents that didn't agree with them. Um, you know, they also want to travel. Like you said, they're living vicariously through me, but they were also like, they wanted to support and to help me. Mm-hmm. And so when I actually asked them for money and for help and I asked them if I could couch surf, um, like they wanted 
to help me. And so, and so, so it's like, that's what makes the Kickstarter and the crowdfunding like, and so now I've got so much more confidence. The projects and the things mm-hmm. I wanted to, to birth into the world are so much bigger. And I have like a hundred percent faith that if it's like, it's going to happen if it's meant to, because mm-hmm. it's not even about me anymore. Mm-hmm. It's like, I like, I've already got the life that I want. And I, and I know I have like more than enough couches to sleep on if I needed them. Like, to the point where I don't need to I don't the point when I don't yeah. need as many, right? And instead like I get to just birth these things into the world, not just for me, but for everyone. And so I always find creative ways to fund them. And it's sometimes it's Kickstarter, sometimes it's Patreon, and maybe in the future it'll be like Bitcoin and some other crazy stuff we can't even predict. But it's like I've really set myself free from trying to follow someone else's blueprint to to make money, to fund my life, to fund my work because I know it's not about me anymore. Mm-hmm. And so that journey yeah. of travel was really like unraveling my mind from trying to do things the way everyone else was doing them. Yeah, and how cool is that? I, I too understand that point of when you can feel the energy is beyond yourself for whatever it is that you're creating. Um, because I felt that with the show as well. It's like I... I started it because I wanted to talk to cool people about metaphysics and spirituality and I just love, you know, having delicious conversations. But then it was like at some point the momentum shifted and it was like there was that tipping point and then I could feel, like visibly feel, like I felt like this energy was outside of myself. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Because that's a really good way. I've never, yeah, that's literally how I feel today. Like this morning, this is like the first week that I've settled in one place that I know I'm going to be in for a couple of weeks. Um, and yesterday I got the reminder to like, basically like call in your angels before you start. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh yeah, I used to do that some more. Um, and then, so I, so I did, I like played the song and I just like did a little meditation and I was just like, yeah, fill literally like filling the space that I'm about to work in with good vibes and, you know, guidance and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of like what you just articulated. It's, and so it's, it's, it's not just an idea. It's like actually setting the intention that like this space that I live in and that I work in right now and everything that I work through with my fingers, Mm because in a sense we work through our fingers and we work through our mouths, but like we know it's all just energy. It's literally like creating this matrix of energy that like when we work, we send, (laughs) we send like pulses of energy out into the world. And it's like trusting. And, and when you work from that headspace of, it's not just about me. It's like, it's, it's like I'm creating something in the world that needs to be created because people are asking for it. Then it's, you know, it's like one day at a time. If I'm Mm -hmm. provided for today, I'll be provided for tomorrow. So let me do my best today to be like an aligned, enlightened being and then see where that energy takes me. Right. And it's that whole like, you know, at the beginning, it's not like $10,000 just drops on you, you know, but it's it's like every day getting yourself into that headspace and working from that headspace of service, you know, that headspace of recognizing that it's not about you. It's about channeling this vision into the world. You do that one day at a time and yeah, in like 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, it's like you'll have your Kickstarter campaign, you have whatever and it's like, there's my income stream, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, but it it wasn't, it was never like freaking out about the money. It was just like one day at a time. I'm going to do the work to stay aligned and just like do whatever is asked of me. Yeah. So I want to switch gears or it's not really switching gears, but I want you to talk about asking for help. Because I'm sure, you know, yeah, I mean, (laughs) asking for help is, is really challenging for most people. Um, me included, I have always tried to do things myself because I'm a capable woman and I can figure things out. But when something you're on a path that is, you know, you have a strong mission, it requires co-creation. And, and you have to step into asking for help. So I want to hear about 
your journey because now you get on Periscope or you put out to your community, yeah, hey, I ask for help all the time. Yeah, and and because you've been supported so many times, it does. You have come to that point where it feels probably more comfortable, and it's like you can feel that it's okay to ask. But yeah. in the beginning, let's talk about that. I mean, was it always easy to ask for help? <laughs> No, I will say this is something I feel like, I feel like the universe taught me it because um, there's a, so there's this beautiful Ted talk by Amanda Palmer yes. um, called the art of asking. If any of you haven't watched this 13 minutes, it's amazing. But the funny thing is by the time I watched it, because someone told me to, um, I was like, yeah, I totally get it. Like that's already what I do. Um, like I didn't need her advice cause I was like, that's what I'm doing. But I think, okay, so here's one of the biggest things that I learned. I, and I, I didn't expect this. I literally learned this. Like the universe showed it to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you help people more when you ask for help. So this actually started with the very first global meditation scope that I did, which for those who don't know, global meditation scope um, is Periscope's first and largest creative meditation community and event. So this time in June, it's going to be a three-day event on Periscope where we've got hundreds of broadcasters leading meditations all weekend. So it's like a retreat, but totally free and just all live streamed. So the first time I did it, it was literally like just an inspired action. Um, like it was an idea that I got in a broadcast when I was just jamming with like the people, my viewers on ideas for how we could help people. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have one day where we got like 20 broadcasters leading meditations all in one day? Um, and I was like, ah, oh, someone wrote, wrote in the three words, global meditation scope, which is short for periscope. And I was like, I love it. Let's do it. And then should I buy the domain? And someone's like, yeah, I'll buy it. So on that parrot live stream, I bought the domain, like my phone and my laptop. I bought the domain on my laptop. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to go to sleep and, and, and we'll deal with this, you know, and then we'll, and then we'll work on it tomorrow. I ended up staying up late for three hours and built out the first version of the website. So I was like, I literally started broadcasting it at 3 a.m. and was like, guys, I stayed up. We're going to do it. Global Meditation Scope is real. And the date that I picked was August 8th, 2015, which was nine days from that day. And it was I just picked eight because it's, you know, repeating number 0808. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. um, and then, and so, and so because I was only nine days away, I literally did not have time to think. Those nine days were like some of the happiest days of my life because I woke up every day and I literally felt like, possessed by this idea yeah so one big thing is like that I'll acknowledge for everyone is like I had to give myself permission not to work on anything that I previously thought I should work on and literally I just like threw myself at the mercy of this idea mm -hmm. it was fun for me but there was always that little bit of like shouldn't you be working on your blogging calendar right. you know and you shouldn't be doing this and that but for once in my lifetime and I honestly don't know why I just I guess this is happening so I can share the story. For once in my lifetime, it felt like this idea is not mine and it's meant to happen in the world. So just do it. <laughs> and so it got to a point though where I had all these ideas for how we could grow this movement and make it bigger, but I only had nine days and I knew I couldn't do it on my own. Mm -hmm. So it, it wasn't a planned thing. I literally was like, guys, this is what we should do to make it grow, right? Like, um, but I need your help. I like at first I was literally individually reaching out to other broadcasters, asking them to be part of it. And I realized that was really slow and I couldn't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't get as many as we wanted. So I started, I literally started my broadcast and asked other people, if you guys know other broadcasters, uh, go into the broadcast and tell them to be part of this global meditation scope thing that we just came up with. And so people actually did it though. So that was like, that was my very first act of asking my audience and my viewers to help me. Mm -hmm. But it really came from a place of like, of course you'll help me because one, this is our idea. This is not my idea. Um, and two, I straight up cannot do this on my own. Right. And I just had this like trust and it was like from spirit that if this idea is meant to be birthed into the world and I cannot do it on my own, that means someone must be here to help me. Mm -hmm. And so I, I asked people to help me and they did. And the event was like a huge success. So we ended up having like over 120 broadcasters leading meditations. And I thought we would have 20, right? So, but those nine days were some of the happiest of my life because I literally woke up every day being like, okay, if this is meant to be birthed, what am I supposed to do today? 
So it was like the act of asking was not even about me and my ego. Mm-hmm. The only reason we are afraid of asking because we're like, oh my God, it makes, it makes me appear weak. But when I work from a place, and sometimes I still have that where I'm like, oh, like I don't, you know, even me, like I still have those times where I'm like, I can't ask for that. Like I yeah. can't ask. But at, it's, but it's only when I'm connected to that voice that's like, this isn't even about you. You are, you are literally like a servant. You are a CIA agent for spirit, and this is what you're supposed to do mm-hmm. to grow, to to birth this into the world. When I come from that place, all of that fear of like that, the ego of like, oh my god, I will look weak, is removed because right. it's not even about me. Um, so that was one big thing. And then I think the other thing that I, as, as I mentioned before, is I, that journey of like beginning that started me asking for pe- people for help. So the second time I did global meditation scope in December, I kind of like, I, I, I went from that same attitude again. And it, and I really, and I, I go from that place of like, I say the global meditation scope is my guru. It's my teacher. It's mm-hmm. my art. It honestly teaches me. And again, this is new to me. This is like, it's not like I was one of those geniuses that discovered that all of my ideas are from spirit. It was like an accident. But this is the first time in my life where I feel like I've got an idea, like an, an energy field, an energy entity, where I really feel like this isn't, this isn't me. Mm-hmm. Like the mm-hmm. idea is like, this is just like something in the world that wants to come into being. And I'm just the one who responded and started birthing into it. Right. And so I get to have this really epic life now. Um, but it's never about me. But so the second time we did it in December, I, I, I realized that the power of the first one was from asking for help. So I kept doing the same thing. I was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we had a video? Does someone want to make a video for us? And someone made a video for us and it's on the website now and it's epic, right? And, and, I, and I was asking, I would ask, and there were more things. So I'd be like, guys, we need these spreadsheets to make um, – these Perry trains happen, which are like back-to-back broadcasts. Mm-hmm. So they got to a point where I'm like, I can't do all of this and do all this other stuff and do MailChimp, the newsletter, and do the Facebook group, and do, and tweet, and this. And, and then so I would literally just start asking people for help. Um, and this time I had a lot more people helping me with like specific tasks, like spreadsheets and the Twitter account and all this stuff. And this was the first time in my life that I had people thank me for helping me. Like... I had like moms, you know, stay at home moms who had kids to watch, people who had full time jobs who were doing this like during their lunch hour or while they were working. They, they, I would like give them something to do and they would come back and thank me and be like, mm. be like, no worries. I loved helping you. Let me know if there's anything else I can do. It's awesome. Like, it's an honor to help. Like, I love being a part of this. I was like, what? <laughs> like, people just worked for me for free. And did this. Like in the online marketing world, it's like, no, hire a VA, you know, get Fiverr, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. do the outsource this. But this is like people working for me for free and like thanking me that I gave them something to do. Yeah. And this was like new for me. But I realized the reason people were thanking me is because, like, for example, I had a girl who was helping me do spreadsheets. She has a job right now where she doesn't really need to do spreadsheets. But she has a finance background. And so she was like, oh, no worries. I love doing these spreadsheets. Um, I kind of miss this. So it was like fun for me to do it. It was awesome. And so I realized that by asking people to help me, I was actually giving them an opportunity to step into their purpose, to feel the ecstasy of what it feels like to live your purpose, to do stuff that lights you up to do stuff that feels aligned with your heart and soul, mm-hmm. right? Because the truth is most people don't actually get to feel this way because when you're working in an office, you're mostly probably like suppressed and pushed yeah. into this box. So you don't actually know what it feels like to be alive, to feel alive with doing something that you love. And so when I was asking people to help me with the most basic things like spreadsheets and create PDFs and design social media graphics, people were happy to help one because it, it made them like, and it, it made them feel like they were living their purpose because they were, and then two, they got to be a part of something bigger than themselves. Yeah. And this is actually a really big thing. Like people want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. Mm-hmm. And it's not manipulative to ask people to be a part <laughs> right. of something bigger than themselves. Like people genuinely long for that. And so, so those are like big mindset shifts that I had that again, like I didn't come, I didn't go searching for it. Like I felt like the universe taught me, taught me and showed me this. And so like by the second time we did it, at the end, I had like a little list of credits. It was like a list of 20 people long who had helped me with different things for free. Like nobody was paid a cent, including myself. I just did all of this for free and it's, and it, but it was so powerful. And like, 
you know, the event itself, so many people cried and healed and people found this incredible community. So this time I'm working on it. It's the third time I'm working on it. It's the longest lead time I've ever had to put it together. Um, but, um, but it's like, and I haven't even announced this, <laughs> you know, but maybe crowdfunding for something like much bigger, like our first like in-person event, mm. um, which I kind of haven't announced, but <laughs> it'll probably be announced by the time this comes out. <laughs> um, but it's, it's so, but I've got like the, the budget for Kickstarter for that is going to be so much bigger. And I think this is the first time that I am going to be financially supported because I've been doing all of this for free for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, but it comes from, a, it also comes at a time when like I've found that peace from knowing that I don't need to be financially supported by having a consistent quote unquote business income stream, right? Because I like spiritually found that faith in myself and all also in spirit and also in humanity to take care of me mm -hmm. through the couch surfing. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. So now I'm going to be asking for more and more stuff, but like, hopefully that, that answered your question is those early days of like, I kind of learned it by accident, mm -hmm. but I realized that I was helping people more by asking. Oh, and the final thing I will add to this, that is like, yeah. c c keeps me asking more and more, um, is that, my work philosophy is all about collaboration. Like everything I create is like, I work on things that I create to work, to work with amazing people. And mm -hmm. like the people that I, you know, who want, like I literally just work with people that I love. And if, if I'm like, I love you, let's talk on Skype more so we can talk on Skype more. And this is yeah. like my fine. <laughs> I once heard someone say that, um, or there's, it's like this quote, um, I don't hire people to bake brownies. I bake brownies to hire people. Mm -hmm. And it's that idea of like, yeah. I work on stuff. I, I create things so that I get to work with people that I love. Mm -hmm. right? And when you think of that perspective, it's very different on a way you relate to people. So my work philosophy is that like, we are all just facets of the diamond. Um, I happen to be given the particular facet and or at least like nurtured my facet of being the face of being, you know, of being the live streamer, of being the talker, of being like the spearheader or whatever you want to call it, but I recognize I can't do this on my own. Like, cause right. I physically cannot do all the spreadsheets, all the emails, the goodie bag, the, mm -hmm. you know, the sponsors of emails, the everything on my own. Yeah. But that means that there's someone else who's meant to be the other facet of my diamond. Well, and I so, love you say that because that's right where I am. I'm, I keep coming up against my physical capability to do it all. I mean, because there are so many working pieces to putting the show together. And it's like my vision is three steps ahead of me. And I'm like, hold on. <laughs> I need some, you know, support to make these things manifest. And so yeah, I'm, I'm that's right where I'm at. So I love that you say that. So any last words that you'd like to leave the viewers with before we finish up today? This idea that is like it's it's like too good to be true almost that when you really just give yourself permission to be yourself, to live your authentic truth, you're gonna get everything that you ever wanted in life. Yeah. Um, and you're gonna help and inspire more people and your life is gonna be like so like more epic <laughs> than you could have ever imagined. And, and even more than what it looks like on the outside, you're going to have that like internal peace and fulfillment that I talked about. And that all it takes is like that first seed of courage. Mm -hmm. And, and if you can do that, if you can like, you know, it's like we're every day we're given these like micro forks in the road. They're really micro. It's like writing the email, showing up to the event, you know, like responding to this podcast and like sending me a message or sending Angela a message or whatever mm -hmm. it is. They're, they're micro forks on the road. But like when you listen and you do those, you do it, do it times 10, times 100, times 1,000. You, you know, that turns into a month of doing it, which turns into a couple of years. And like, as you heard even from my journey, it was like, even though I just got on Periscope like less than a year ago yeah. and it's completely changed my life, it's, it's been years in the making mm -hmm. of like putting my story out there and being like, no. I'm not going to do this thing that feels like it's going to squash my soul. Instead, I'm going to listen to that voice. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I feel like the life, like the joy that I get to, th that I can have in my heart every day on a daily basis now is priceless. And like, I wish like what I would want is just for everyone to get to experience it. Mm -hmm. And 
and you know and the secret that's like too good to be true is like you know you just got to have that little seed of courage to step out and to start so true and and don't you find that when you're aligned with your path that doors just fly open and things as long as you're stepping forward with courage that anything is possible yeah 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 there's a <laughs> journal that I'm writing in it like two people gave me journals within a week of each other one says anything is possible the other one says everything is possible for one who believes yeah so Ugh. yeah well <laughs> Yeah, I, I think there's no better way to end the show on that note. Anything is possible because it is. It, it is. It's so true. So thank you so much for joining me. This was oh an incredible discussion. And I know that I'm going to be stepping more boldly into my truth and, and what's next for me. So thank you. Thank you for sharing Yay, your I'm truth. Glad. Yeah. You're so welcome, Angela. And if you need any help, don't <laughs> be afraid to ask. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Awakened Goddess Show. I hope you enjoyed today's guest and got something you can start using in your life right away. For more spiritual insights and to listen to more episodes, subscribe to The Awakened Goddess Show at theawakenedgoddess.com and discover wisdom that'll change your life.